It's the largest patch Tuesday in Microsoft history. We got a lot to talk about. Let's talk about it on the patch report. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Patch Report for April 2024. I am Dustin Childs, your host here, Head of Threat Awareness at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative, and our unofficial patch wrangler. Wow, there's so much to talk about. I'll try and get through it quickly. Let's jump right in and start talking about Adobe, because there's not a lot to talk about Adobe. We have nine patches, but only 24 CVEs. There was a few critical in here, but there's nothing really that really stands out. The biggest one is Experience Manager, and that's got a bunch of cross-site scripting bugs but they're all important severity. Uh, there's a couple ones that are fixed for animate and commerce, but eh, whatever. Interestingly, we do have an out of bounds read in like several different products. And it makes me think that that might be share code. When you have the same type of bug found by the same person in five different programs, it's possible. We don't know, that's speculation. But let's get down here to uh, Microsoft. This is the largest patch Tuesday of Microsoft ever. We have 147 new CVEs. We have a few coming in from uh, Google and Intel. So 155 total, it is just ginormous. Uh, there's no way of telling if this is just a backlog or if this is the new normal, but I can tell you there's a few things in here that really frighten uh, and really worry me. But let's start with this thing. And this is the smart screen security feature bypass. Now. We detected this, we being the Zero Day Initiative, our threat analysis team looked out and Peter Gurus, who's a threat analysis, found this in the wild. Google Threat Analysis Group is also credited as reporting this. It very much is like the smart screen bug that we found earlier. Uh, it's used to evade endpoint detection or network detection. Um, what we're seeing in the wild is that people are using zip files uh, or compressed files of some sort to get past that sort of detection and then they're using Mark of the Web bypasses to load up the ransomware or whatever so they get their thing to, to execute. The interesting thing is Microsoft does not list this currently as actively exploited. We think it is. That's why I put it as a maybe on the table. But definitely take a look at that and uh, patch quickly. Up next is another thing that always worries me, and maybe it's because I'm old school. It's an RPC RCE. And I know that's a bit of a tongue twister, but there's a long history of RPC exploits in the wild. In a quick search, uh, I found, without trying, 1.3 million open TCP port 135s on the internet. So um, this does say authentication is required. Good to know, but it's not clear what level of authentication. Can you authenticate as guests? Can you authenticate as everyone? Can you authenticate you know, with whatever and still have this e exploit? So. Take a look at that and uh, yeah, be afraid. Next up is we have an outlook for Windows spoofing vulnerability. Um, I would not call it spoofing. I would call it information disclosure because what are you disclosing here is NTLM hashes and then you use the NTLM hash to spoof uh, a user identity. Okay, so tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Let's patch the whole thing up. Uh, either way, outlook for Windows is rather ubiquitous. NTLM, uh, NTLM, replay attacks are becoming more common. We're seeing those out there. So definitely take a look and uh, your stuff. And then we have this, okay? We have uh, DNS server remote code execution vulnerability. And we have seven of them and they all look about the same. So I'm not hitting the panic button yet, but RCE and my DNS server always makes me um, twitchy. Okay, in this case, you do need the ability to query a DNS server. If you have privileges to do that, okay, those privileges are relatively common. And there's a timing factor here as well. So it's not just I send one query to a DNS server, I've got to send a whole bunch and it's got to be timed exactly correctly. So it makes me think it could happen. Um, and code execution would occur at the level of the DNS server, which is elevated. So I don't want to, again, I'm not hitting the panic button on this, but this is one that's like, holy cow, I'm running this out. I'm testing this on my DNS servers, I'm running this out to production. Hastily, I, I wouldn't say in, in an emergency fashion, but hastily. Uh, so looking at the rest of the table here, it's a big table this month. And I also want to point out 
see that little cross? There are so many bugs this month that require extra attention beyond just applying the patch. It is crazy. And I'm actually going to go outside of the a blog here as far as the, the, the way I talk about them because I want to get down here to this secure boot. And I don't think we can call it secure boot anymore because there's like 20 plus patches for security feature bypasses in secure boot. Yeah, 20 patches in a month. I don't get, think you get to use the word secure anymore. I don't know. I think it's in secure boot now. And the worst part of this is the patch doesn't address the problem. The patch fixes the bug, but it turns off protections by default. So you have to go check out that KB article and I'll put a link to it in the show notes down below. You got to go check out that KB article and see what you need to do um, to fully enable these protections. And this is why I'm like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe there are that many bugs in a secure function uh, that's a security feature bypass that you need to manually update across your enterprise. Oof, man, that's tough. Uh, I hope we can figure out a way to automate it. Speaking of manually stuff, all this Azure stuff, so we got a bunch of EOP bugs and most of them are not very exciting. Now I wanna be clear when I say not very exciting, technically they're not very exciting. From an attacker standpoint, they can be very exciting because kernel EOP bugs get used all the time, okay? But if you've seen one kernel EOP, you've seen a whole bunch of kernel EOPs. So I don't get very excited about them. These Azure bugs, um, not necessarily exciting. I do like with this Azure uh, Arc enabled Kubernetes, I could get certain things like, uh, you know, sensitive information, you know, other extensions that are used, but then I have to take additional actions to really go through and make sure my Azure stuff is set to go. Uh, same for the Azure monitor agents. I mean, you've got to do a bunch of extra stuff. Um, and it just is, you need to take your time. If you're running any Azure service, you've got to look at all of your bulletins that relate to Azure because a lot of them have extra steps. Don't think you just apply the patch or you run auto update and you're done. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. Um, code execution. Holy sequel, Batman. And I don't mean like, you know, the sequel to Batman being Batman and Robin or something like that. I mean SQL. I mean, holy SQL bugs, Batman. I have no idea what Yuki Chen and his group over there are doing, but they are finding all the SQL bugs. Now, the good news is the likelihood of any of these things being actively exploited in the wild is pretty low because you would have to entice someone in an effective system to connect to a malicious SQL server and perform some queries. So it's not straightforward. Um, but oof, oof, that hurts. Um, I would concern myself more with the DNS that I've already mentioned and some DHCP uh, code execution bugs. Um, the DHCP, uh, you would need to be an elevated user to uh, go ahead and exploit this, but this is a good reason to like uh, audit your DHCP servers and who actually does have ex uh, access and make sure you don't have someone unintentionally there with elevated access who, who might need it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oh, by the way, there's an Excel bug that's pretty straightforward. It's just open and own, unless you're on uh, Alphas for Mac, in which case don't open Excel, I guess, because there's not an update available yet. Bummer. Uh, anyway, uh, looking beyond that, uh, we have some information disclosure bugs. Most of them are just uh, unspecified memory content. The one I do want to call out is the Azure AI search. We could obtain sensitive API keys. And of course you need to do extra stuff there, uh, making sure that you uh, check your Azure ser service health, which is really difficult to say for alerts at notifying you uh, of anything else. And the final thing is there's some DOS, there's some other spoofing bugs. None are really that interesting. If you do have to focus on something, the DOS bugs and DHCP service, I would start there uh, because you have a no fun day if your DHCP server goes down. Hey, so we made it through and that's a lot of information and I know I talk really quick. Obviously you can check the blog for all of the details. I will as always have a link down below 
And please make sure that you really read all of those bulletins, the ones that I called out, because there is a lot of detail in there that you really need to take your time and set up for. I've tried to point out everything in the table with that little extra check mark that, where you need to really pay attention. So I hope that's useful to you. I will be back next month, May 14th is our next Patch Tuesday, and I will see you then. Until then, please stay safe and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.